And, um, and what you've done with launching HIM uh, Network, it is an apostolic network where you gather apostles from all over the world. So please stand up with us. So if you can stand because you're standing in authority because you're all kings and priests and all of us, we're an apostolic people. So as an apostolic team with the authority that God's given to us, we decree and declare that racism will end, it's over, in the ecclesia from this night forward in Jesus' mighty name. Let's lift it up and bang it. <laughs> we need you to agree with us. Okay, on the count of three, on three, shout with us. One, two, three. Thou shalt not pass. Okay. Uh, she's asking for a little more time. Uh, so we have video we cut out, give her more time, but she's asking for more time the other way now. Not really coherent enough yet. Wow, and we'll even be happy about it. Shoot. <laughs> I forget. You're so, you're so nice. You just let people get toasted right in church. It's like, huh? Morons. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Long for Truth. My name is Daniel Long, and sitting next to me is my lovely wife, Robin. Hi, everyone. So we are continuing our series on the new apostolic reformation, and today we are going to be talking about apostles. Are the NAR apostles, they claim to be apostles, but are they genuine apostles? Right, and I think we're going to start by reading a verse to you. Yes, this is the NAR go-to verse that says that uh, there are still apostles today within the modern church. I'm in Ephesians 4, starting in verse 11. And he gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the shepherds, and teachers to equip the saints for the work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ, until we all attain to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God to mature manhood, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. All right. And so that is, again, that is the go-to verse for the NAR apostles claiming that the apostolic office is still uh, going on today. And also, isn't that the go-to verse for anyone who um, uses the term the five-fold ministry? Yes, it's the five-fold ministry verse. Right. Absolutely. We're going to talk, we're going to show a clip right now of Patricia King. She's in an interview uh, with Shay Ahn. And uh, we're going to continue on with these clips. But the first clip you're going to see is Patricia King. And listen to what she says about um, the apostolic ministry. In fact, um, the beauty of apostolic authority, when it's exercised, it actually brings shifts. It brings light into the darkness. It creates those things that are not. You know, it, it's like bringing forth the kingdom. And that's the beauty of the apostolic authority that every believer has that apostolic oil in them. Yes. Um, and, and if we would all exercise it, we wouldn't say, oh, I need to escape the darkness. Everything's going to get worse and worse. But we would know, no, we are here to make sure heaven comes to earth. Jesus' Amen. prayer and the way he taught us prayer is going to be answered fully. <laughs> praying right? for 2,000 years. But I don't think people <laughs> fully understand what they're praying. Right. That he is serious about his right. kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. So in that clip, she says that the apostolic authority brings shifts. It brings light into the darkness. and uh, Creates is, things that are not. Creates things that are not. Here's a question for you. They've got apostles, thousands of apostles within their different spheres, I guess you could say, um, prophets, apostolic networks. So all of the, all of this, uh, this activity from the apostles going into different regions and trying to cast out demons and things like that. And yet nothing's getting better. It's getting worse and worse. Nothing these people are doing is working at all, at all. and right. she says that. So, And you'll see that continually. We're going to share with you in a minute a few of their definitions of what an apostle is, and most of them have to do with being the leaders for ushering in God's kingdom, having the visions that um, bring that kingdom back to earth now. Yeah, that's the whole big thing. You know, without the apostles, without the these these apostles, these modern-day apostles, 
well, the church isn't going to function properly. I mean, yeah, you have pastors and yeah, you have teachers, and but, but without the apostles and prophets, the church will not function properly. That is what they say. That's so true. you want to read a definition there? Um, sure. Um, from the ICAL website, um, I get this, that C. Peter Wagner defines an apostle as a Christian leader who is gifted, taught, and commissioned by God with the authority to establish the foundational government of the church within an assigned sphere of ministry by hearing what the Spirit is saying to the churches and by setting things in order accordingly for the advancement of the kingdom of God. And I know this really bothered you because just talking about hearing what the Spirit is saying to the churches. Yeah, so Wagner says that the job of an apostle is to hear what the Spirit is saying, not what the Spirit has said through Scripture, but what the Spirit is saying to the churches. In other words, direct revelation. Uh, that right now, rhema word? Yeah, and new revelation. It's mm -hmm. not like the Spirit is counseling or guiding like we would expect in the New Testament. Mm -hmm. This is new revelation. Brand spanking new revelation for the churches. Now, of course, they would say, well, it has to agree with Scripture, and it could never be on par with Scripture. The problem is, if the God of the universe is speaking and giving direction to these apostles and prophets, it, how is it not on par with Scripture? It is God speaking to them. It is God giving them direct revelation in order to lead the church. And I would say this, they're not doing a very good job. Because again, things are getting worse and worse. Better. And they do get that direct revelation, either personally, a revelation from God, or through a prophet. Most apostles mm -hmm. are linked with a prophet who will give them a word from God. Yeah. We do have another um, definition okay. from Bill Hammond. Bill Hammond wrote a book called Apostles, Prophets, and the Coming Moves of God. God's end time plans for his church and planet earth. And this is basically a must have book for any apostle or prophet yeah. in the NAR. Yeah. Bill Hammond is, uh, is to the prophets like C. Peter Wagner was to the apostles. Correct. So in this book, this is Bill's description of an apostle. First of all, who is an apostle and what is his or her ministry? An apostle is just a person who has been divinely gifted with the nature and ability of Christ the apostle. Jesus was able to manifest the miraculous, know the truths about his church and the purpose of God his Father, operate in the gift of faith and discerning of spirits, lay the foundation and bring forth the revelation for his church through his office of the apostle. Apostles will always have an ability to work miracles. They will vary in their gifts of the Holy Spirit, but they primarily move in the gifts of healing, faith, working of miracles, words of wisdom, discerning of spirits, and sometimes prophecy. What these people have to, what the, the whole thing that they have to rely on, and, and, it, and, and I, I see this in part of this quote where Hammond says, Jesus was able to manifest the miraculous, know the truths about his church and purposes of God, his father, operate in the gift of faith and discerning of spirits, lay the foundation and bring from the revelation or bring forth, I'm sorry, the revelation for his church through his office of the apostles. So they have to rely on their theology, on their doctrine that teaches Christ did not do any any of his miracles um, using his divinity. It, it, he he did right. all of his miracles as a man, uh, you know, possessed by the Holy Spirit through the power of the Holy Spirit. And they say that because if Jesus did it like that, if Jesus used the Holy Spirit to do to work all of his miracles, well then we can do exactly what Jesus did through the power of the Holy Spirit. Right. Um, Rick Joyner, in one of his books, wrote uh, something about the miracles that we should be seeing now or in the near future. He said, leaders will again arise to destroy the gods of this world and lead God's people to freedom. Parting the Red Sea will hardly be remembered as a significant miracle after the things that will be done by those who serve the Lord at the end of this age. It will be demonstrated again that the Almighty is in fact Almighty and that our King sits above all rule, authority, and dominion. That is one of the most arrogant quotes that we have 
here today to, to give to you. I mean, think about what he's saying there. The parting of the Red Sea Nothing. is going it's going to be insignificant compared to what these great apostles are doing. And again, what are they doing? Because things are getting worse. Nothing's getting better. They're they have territorial spirits that they're trying to cast out, but nothing's getting better. It's all getting worse. I just remembered in the movie The Princess Bride when um the smarty pants is sitting there and he's like, Socrates, Aristotle, idiots. You're that smart. Let me put it this way. Have you ever heard of Plato, Aristotle, Socrates? Yes. Morons. Like, I can just picture <laughs> Rick Joyner said, Red Sea, foolishness. Morons. Uh, craziness. It's it's just it absolute. Really craziness. It's, it's absolute insanity. Yeah. Anyway. Um, so moving on to Bill Johnson, also a leader in the NAR. Um, we wanted to show a quick clip yes, of him did. and then give his definition of an apostle. But uh, the way I look at the, the apostolic gift, the apostolic calling, is that both the apostle and the prophet have a, their position gives them a perception of heaven and how it's to affect earth. Mm -hmm. It's a culturizing role. It's yeah. not that the prophet is more spiritual than the evangelist who is all about souls. It has nothing to do with who's more spiritual. It has to do with perception. Okay, so it has to do, the role of apostle has to do with perception. You see, the apostle is the one that can see and uh, see the big picture. Right? He has the heavenly vision. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, mm. so. Also, Bill also um, says this about apostles. Apostles are first and foremost fathers by nature. True fathers continually make choices for the well-being of their children with little thought to personal sacrifice. In the same way that a father and mother are to bring stability to a home, so the apostles and prophets are the stability of the church. The Apostle Paul calls them the church's foundation. Good foundations bring stability. Okay, so he's, he's, he's equating modern-day apostles with what Ephesians 4.20 says about the apostles and prophets being the foundation of the church. We're going to read that verse a little later, but think about this for a minute. When you have a foundation, do you need another foundation? He's equating the modern-day apostles as, you know, as the foundation. But think about it. How can they be the foundation? Is the church being built now? Was it not being built then? Being rebuilt? Yeah, I Is mean, it doesn't make any with the sense. First foundation. Yeah, so the foundation mm, that the apostle Paul is talking about there in Ephesians is the apostles and prophets of that time, the, the, the 12 and Paul. Mm. Before we look at what the Bible says about apostles, why don't we show that Heidi Baker clip? Absolutely. Here's Heidi Baker and talking about how she became an apostle. And inside out, I'll never be the same. And I'm still desperate. I'm still thirsty. Randy Clark was, was talking and suddenly said, I have to change my message. I need to speak about the apostolic anointing. Well, that word kind of bothered me because I'd seen a lot of arrogance surrounding the word. So my little theological brain was ticking and, ah, but I, I was, I couldn't help it. I, he said apostolic blessing, and I was praying for a Brazilian who had a mouth filled with gold. I mean, that was already wild, and she's screaming, and, and suddenly Randy says apostolic anointing, and God just flips me up on side of my head, on top of my head, and I can't do this physically, and I'm thinking, oh, sweet Jesus, thank you that I'm wearing trousers. That's all I could, because I was Pentecostal holiness. You know, I only wore skirts, and I was really grateful for trousers. And I'm on my head, and Randy's saying, more, and he's enjoying it. And I'm like, what are you doing, God? And I'm on my head, and I remember this song. I said, take me and use me, bruise me if need be. And, and I was singing about white fields of harvest and children crying and dying. Take me and use me, bruise me if need be. And I'm on my head and then bam, I'm down. And I'm, I was literally bruised from head to toe. And as I'm up on my head, the Lord said, holy apostolics upside down, it's the lowest place. And then Ian Ross comes and he said, is it okay as if you have to ask me at that point? I'm on my head screaming in church. It's just, it's bizarre. If I was an onlooker, I'd say, 
It's weird. That woman's whacked. And he said, can I pour water on your head, uh, water down your feet? And I'm like, of course, you know. But he doesn't take a nice little bottle. He gets a big old big bottle and he just pours it down my feet as my legs are in the air and I'm on my head. And he's just saying, more Lord, more Lord. And God just hits me. Okay, so Heidi Baker's experience, Apostle Robin. Apostle Heidi Baker. Ah, yes. Apostle Heidi Baker's experience in becoming an apostle, that apostolic call that she had was a greater experience than all of the other apostles calling, including the apostle Paul, who was knocked off of his horse by a bright light, and Jesus actually spoke to him. But the apostle Paul wasn't flipped up on his head and thrown around the room like people were at the Toronto Blessing. Just so ridiculous, just unbelievably ridiculous. It's, it's difficult to listen to. Mm -hmm. I think she had it right when she said we might think she's whacked. Yeah. Yeah. She was right about that. That woman's whacked. All right. So we wanted to talk about what God's word says about an apostle and start it off with a definition by Shayan. Mm, yeah. So let's look at Shayan's definition of what an actual apostle is. Okay. But you said something that uh, a number of times you talk about apostolic authority, and I think this is very important because, you know, you had talked and we're just talking in the green room, what distinguishes an apostle from a prophet from the other fivefold ministries. And uh, the one thing I want to just say is that in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 28, he says, first apostles, second prophet, uh, third teachers. And Paul uses very strong Greek words, proton, deuteron, and triton. And when he says first, it's not first that we're better than anyone else. We're all equal before God, but it's first in authority. That God has given authority to the apostles. That's why in Matthew 28, he takes the 12, uh, minus Judas, of course, back to Galilee, to the mountain, where I think he gave the Sermon on the Mount. It's not in Jerusalem. But he says, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth, implying that I'm giving you now this authority to disciple nations. Wow. So apostles have an extraordinary authority. And that, this is why it's so important for us to recognize apostles in the body of Christ, because we used to say, if we just gather the pastors together and pray together, we'll see revival. We need okay. unity, and we do need unity. But... I just want to submit that pastors are not the highest authority in the body of right. Christ. So if we can gather apostles together, if right. they can come together and unite and pray, they could shift things uh, right. that could really change history. And that's why I'm so excited about the apostolic ministry. So in that clip, Shayon says that apostles, of course, are more important than pastors, and he's equating to modern-day apostles, and he places the apostles in authority. And, of course, the apostles were um, above, apostles and prophets were, you know, above pastors and teachers, but that was then. That's not talking about now, because the apostles, again, are the foundation. They are the ones that laid the foundation that the church is built upon, Christ himself being the chief cornerstone of that of the, the, the church. So if they're the foundation, again, if they're the foundation, what are we doing? Building two foundations here? It doesn't, it doesn't make any sense. No, it doesn't. So along with Shayon, we have one other quote to read by Bill Johnson when he's trying to describe how important unity in the body of Christ is. And he says, unity based on common doctrines has a measure of success, but there is an inherent problem with this approach. Unity of this nature is based upon uniformity. When God is saying something new, those who are listening are usually asked by their leaders to leave the group they were a part of. Their newfound convictions and beliefs are considered threatening and divisive. If the whole group doesn't move in step with what God is saying, there will be a break in fellowship. When agreement in non-essential beliefs are considered necessary for fellowship, then division is natural and to be expected. While doctrine is vitally important, it is not a strong enough foundation to bear the weight of his glory that is about to be revealed through true unity. So he is saying here that while doctrine 
is something that, sure, that, that's really important. We shouldn't divide over doctrine, especially with all of these new revelations coming in. Is that what, is that what he's exactly. saying? Exactly. We need to stay together because we're brothers and sisters in Christ, and, and we're following the apostle or the father. The father is going to keep his family together. Folks, go through Paul's epistles and see how he viewed doctrine and the importance of doctrine, and how pastors are to teach correct, right doctrine. And there is nothing, nothing at all in the Scriptures that Im even imply the fact that uh, new revelations are going to be given to the church that's going to lead and direct the church. The, 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 uh, the Jude says, the Apostle Jude says mm -hmm. that the, the faith is that we have is the once for all delivered faith to the saints. So if we're to allow for major doctrinal differences and still remain unified, that is what is going to allow false teachings to come in. Absolutely. It's just crazy what these people who call themselves apostles, and Bill Johnson, by the way, is considered an apostle, just in case you didn't know that. That's so. true. Good. So I think we wanted to go to see what the Bible has to say about apostles. Now. Let's look and see what a biblical definition of an apostle is. And let's start out with, um, well, when Jesus picked um, his first apostles. Okay, in Luke chapter 6, starting in verse 12, in these days he went out to the mountain to pray, and all night he continued in prayer to God. And when day came, he called his disciples and chose from them twelve, whom he named apostles. Okay, so these were specific men out of all of Jesus' disciples. Um, there was more than 12 disciples. There were, uh, you know, we know that he sent out 70 or some say 72 mm -hmm. to go out and to um, do the work of the ministry while he was uh, still on earth. So there, out, of, out of a large group of disciples, Jesus chose 12 apostles. And we know who those 12 apostles are because he told them that they would mm -hmm. be the pillars of the church. So right. those uh, that, that was how they were chosen. Okay, right. and so in this next uh, passage of Scripture, in Acts chapter 1, this is where the disciples are in the upper room, and they are choosing someone to take the place of Judas, which ended up being Matthias. Acts 1, 21 through 23. So one of the men who have accompanied us during all the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us, beginning from the baptism of John until the day when he was taken up from us, one of these men must become with us a witness to his resurrection. And they put forth two, Joseph called Barsabbas, who was also called Justus, and Matthias. So there in the choosing of Matthias, there was qualification a qualification that took place. There had to have been someone out of the whole group of other disciples who had been with Jesus from the time of John's baptism all the way up through the resurrection and have seen the risen had seen the risen Christ and so they cast lots and the lot fell uh, they chose out of the whole group two men cast lots and the lots fell on Matthias but the point is they themselves in that passage show that there was a qualification there had in order to be one of the 12 not you know an apostle per se but one of the 12 apostles so yeah and i think there's a, a lot of people who talk about the big a little a apostles mm -hmm. so the big a apostles would be those 12 that plus paul were yes that were chosen by christ that had seen Christ. Yeah. And then throughout the New Testament, we do see the little a apostles also, which we could um, say were messengers, missionaries, mm -hmm. church planners. Yeah. And I, and I'm, we're going to show you a, a passage that talks about that in just a second, but I, I want to talk really quickly about the apostle Paul because he wasn't part of the original 12. Right. So what makes him a big A apostle? Because I, I, I had a, we had a comment on one of our videos. I can't remember which one it was. It might've been the um, Passion Translation. I can't remember, but the person said, Paul was not, Paul did not see the resurrected Christ. Well, Paul, he saw the glorified Christ. That was the comment. Paul didn't see the resurrected Christ. Paul saw the glorified Christ. But the glorified Christ is the resurrected Christ. 
And Paul becomes a big A apostle because of his ministry, his ministry to the Gentiles. He was fulfilling scripture and he knew that he was fulfilling scripture as an apostle to the Gentiles. That's all the way back in Isaiah, where Isaiah talked about the gospel going out to the Gentiles. Paul saw himself as the fulfillment of that passage in Isaiah. And so did Peter and the other apostles, because when they were, they recognized Paul in that capacity. You can read the book of Acts and you you can see that for yourself, but they recognized Paul in that capacity. Very good. While we're talking about Paul, why don't we go to 1 Corinthians 15 and read what Paul says about himself as an apostle? Yes, absolutely. Okay, so 1 Corinthians 15, starting in verse 3, for I delivered to you as of first importance what I also received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve. Then he appeared to more than 500 brothers at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have fallen asleep. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared also to me. For I am the least of the apostles, unworthy to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. Notice what Paul says in verse 8 there. Last of all, to one untimely, as to one untimely born, he appeared to me. Paul considered himself the last of the apostles, of the big A apostles. Right. So, yeah. So, so that, that was, uh, that is the reason why Paul is considered one of the big A apostles. And we were talking about small A apostles, like you were, you, you mentioned. Um, and, uh, I believe we've got a passage in Philippians. Is that true? Yes. Philippians two, um, verses 24, or 25. 25. I have thought it necessary to send to you Epaphroditus, my brother and fellow worker and fellow soldier, and your messenger and minister to my need. Okay, that word messenger is the Greek word uh, for apostle. Let me let me show you that really quickly. I want to just uh, run over here to um, my Bible program, and we're going to look at that word. So this is Philippians chapter 2, verse 25, all right? I thought it necessary to send you Epaphroditus, my brother and fellow worker and fellow soldier, and your messenger and minister to my need. So this word messenger here, if I double click on this, watch what happens. This is BDAG, okay? This is uh, the Greek lexicon, but watch what happens when I click on this word messenger. It's going to, there's a Greek word, apostolos. So that would be an example of a little a apostle. It's translated messenger. And we do have other instances where apostles, little a apostles are mentioned, like with Adronicus and Junius and, and others like mm-hmm. that. But they were not big a apostles. Those men were the foundation of the church, the apostles and the prophets. And women. There were women yes. missionaries. Junius was probably mm-hmm. a woman. So there were women apost- yes. apostles, but they were sent out by the church. The church is the one who sent them out. Yep. These big A apostles were called specifically by Christ himself to establish or to be the foundation for the church and to even write scripture. Correct. One other quick point I want us to talk about a little bit is a lot of people will say, so you don't believe in the fivefold ministry, even though we do believe in the fivefold ministry. And that is the verse about the apostles, the prophets, evangelists, teachers. We believe that the apostles who laid the foundation of the church are still speaking to us today through the word of God, Mm -hmm. through scripture. We do not believe that there are modern day apostles. Now, if you want to call a missionary or a church planter an apostle, that's fine. It just, you know, it's probably not, it's going to be a little confusing, but if you want to do that, that's fine because they are, that's what the word apostle means sent, it's sent out. So if a church sends missionaries or church right. planters, then yeah, I mean, you could consider them little a apostles. Right. I think the problem comes in when you say there are apostles today mm-hmm. that have authority to 
change doctrine, yeah. bring new revelation from God mm -hmm. to the body of Christ. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's a problem. Big problem. Big problem. Big A, big problem. So we also want to talk a little bit about the associations of the apostles. There's a bunch of networks out there. Mm -hmm. uh, the first one we're going to talk about is the International Coalition of Apostolic Leaders, or ICAL. On their website, they say that ICAL is designed to connect apostolic leaders' wisdom and resources in order that each member can function more strategically, combine their efforts globally, and effectively accelerate the advancement of the kingdom of God into every sphere of society. And they are doing such a fantastic job because things are getting better and better and better. Aren't things they? are looking up. Things are looking up. Anyway. So if you'd like to join ICAL, um, they will ask you to contribute $450 a year or six fifty dollars for a couple. Um, there's also, they give a little definition of what exactly is an apostolic leader. Um, an apostolic leader is the primary point person of a network, a movement, or a major thought leader who influences thousands of people. So I don't even think you can get into this unless you influence thousands of people. Mm. They are master builders and overseers of God's designated spheres of influence. They are recognized and honored by their followers and peers. Many with the gift of apostle choose to call themselves bishop, pastor, prophet, doctor, or other titles, including apostle. Great. Um, Empowered 21 is another network, and this is probably uh, the most different network there is. They want to um, connect generations of boomers to Gen Zs. They, if you look at their goals, they're all about finding the right language to touch each generation. And one of their goals is to facilitate connectivity, unity, prayer, worship, resources, etc., that will encourage spirit-empowered living. This would include the use of video resources, teaching helps, etc. Uh, mm -hmm. Their leaders include Heidi Baker, Christine Kane, Jensen Franklin, Claudio Friedson, Brian Houston, Cindy Jacobs, Bill Johnson, Robert Morris yeah. are all involved in that group. Yep, a bunch of uh, people who are um, out there preaching heresy. So, yeah. Um, word of faith, uh, word mm. of faith guy, a word of faith teacher, Robert Morris. Big, big word of faith guy. He is. Um, Harvest International Ministry is the one that's headed up by Shay on. Mm -hmm. 25,000 um, ministries and leaders are associated in this group. Mm -hmm. They're connected in this group, excuse me. And they actually have an apostolic council. Now, I don't know what you think of when you think of an apostolic council. I have some images that come to my mind. So what goes through my mind when I think of a council are two things, or two two images. I think of the council in the Lord of the Rings, mm -hmm. and I think of the council in Santa Claus 2. One, two, three. Thou shalt not pass! The Tooth Fairy. The Tooth Fairy. What is his name? The Molinator. The, mo <laughs> the Molinator. And uh, then we have the Sandman, Santa Claus, yes, the Easter Bunny. Yes, Mother Nature. Mm. Um, so on the Apostolic Council of Harvest International Ministry is um, our friend Brian Simmons, mm -hmm. Wes and Stacy Campbell. <clears throat> And of course, the ons. And they ask that you contribute at least, pray about it, but you must contribute at least $550 a year plus 5% of your missions budget. So if you're involved in a church and you want to be a member, anything else, at least 5% of your missions budget to Breaking become a part box. of him. Yeah. Right. So folks, the apostles in scripture, they are the final apostles, the big A uh, apostles and the 12 and Paul. They are the final apostles. There are no more apostles today, unless again, you want to call a missionary or a church planner an apostle, which is fine, a little confusing, but it, it's, it's mm -hmm. you know, it it's the same the apostle, just meaning being sent, someone who is sent. But as far as apostles, we do not believe that the Bible teaches that there are apostles today. The apostles are the foundation of the church. You don't need to build another foundation. So true. Thanks for watching. Bye.